There is a kind of bear child. When adults talk, he will deliberately make noise in order to get the attention of parents. Sam, the father, stopped it many times, but the child becomes more aggressive. Than no! Couldn't you just stay dead? Isabel, Mom and Uncle Tommy are sick all the time! Enough! There was so much information, embarrassed everyone in the room. When we got home, Sam sat quietly in the living room. His wife, Grace, wanted to talk to him. Sam was as cold as ice. He slowly got up. He walked to the kitchen with a crowbar in his hand. You know what I did? when my brother Tommy showed up. He spread his hands to show he meant no harm and walked up and gave his brother a hug. Then he motioned for Grace to leave. Sam immediately pulled a gun from his waist. Grace rushed upstairs, letting her two daughters back into the room. Sam pointed the gun at Tommy and shouted. At that moment, the siren sounded. Knowing that Tommy called the police, Sam became even more frantic. He walked out the door. He confronts the police with a gun. <laughs> Tommy was afraid of the police shooting, explaining over and over again. Fuck off! This is a family matter! But Sam had completely lost his mind. After a moment of hysterical shouting, suddenly quiet again. Then he raises the gun to his head. Everyone panics. His brother Tommy and his wife Grace tried to stop Sam from doing something stupid, but they were afraid to go forward. In the end, Sam didn't have the courage to face death. He turned to his brother and said, I'm drowning, Tommy and then threw the gun on the ground. The police quickly rushed up and subdued Sam. The betrayal of his wife and brother was only the trigger. Sam's inner pain is more from the war. After returning from the war in Afghanistan, his inner demons were planted in his heart. Sam is a captain in the United States Marine Corps. He had been his father's pride and joy since he was a boy. He was his brother Tommy's greatest idol. He has a beautiful wife and two lovely daughters. The family was very happy and prosperous. Until one day, Sam received orders from his superiors to go on a mission to Afghanistan. As the helicopter was flying in the valley, it was attacked by extremists. The helicopter lost control. It soon crashed into the valley. Two marine leaders came to Sam's home. They told their wife. Grace. Sam had been killed, and they gave Grace a letter. It was written by Sam before he went on his mission, but Grace never had the courage to open it. The sudden and terrible news was too much for her to bear. Luckily, her brother-in-law, Tommy, was always there to help, seeing the dilapidated kitchen, so he got some friends to come over and renovate it. For Grace's birthday, he would prepare an elaborate holiday party. He would call his parents, and neighbors to join the fun. The kids loved spending time with their uncle, and Grace gradually became attached to Tommy. The relationship between the two grew closer and closer. In the meantime, Sam Wells didn't die. After the helicopter crash, he and his teammate, Connie, miraculously survived. But unfortunately, the two men fell into the hands of Afghan extremists. They were held captive in a hole in the ground. They could only see out through gaps in the wooden planks. That was two months. The claustrophobic confinement almost broke Connie. But Sam was quiet. He reassured Connie, must remain calm, no matter what the situation is. No information should be revealed. Soon after, a more brutal group of people appeared. They moved the two men to another base. The leader of the extremists said to Sam, You are not supposed to be here. This is our country. And then executed a traitor in front of them. Connie was shaking in fear. So the extremists started with him. In the face of brutal torture, Connie quickly gave in. Not only did he reveal all his information, he did what the extremists wanted. He expressed his discontent with the United States. The extremists recorded a video and showed it to Sam. Then he took out an iron bar and asked Sam to kill Connie. Sam couldn't do it, but the leader of the extremists raised his gun and threatened. If he didn't do it, not only would he die, Sam's family would all die too. The extremists started to raise a ruckus. Kill him, or your whole family will die. The fear was so great that Connie was about to die. Sam finally struck. This brutal scene, the extremists caught it on video. The extremists finish their mission and prepare to leave. Sam was about to be executed as well. Just then, a U.S. helicopter appeared. The extremists were shot. Then the Marines came and killed them. Sam was rescued. All the extremists outside were eliminated. The video camera was burned. Only Sam knows what happened here. Meanwhile, Grace was busy in the kitchen in the States. Outside, Tommy is playing with his 
two children. Suddenly a call comes in from the military. Sam is still alive. Grace was surprised and happy. She brought her two children to the airport to bring their father home. The kids were excited, but Sam was very calm. Just a simple hug with the family and then go home together. Sam's back was covered in bruises. Grace was heartbroken. She kissed Sam's scars, trying to give him comfort, but Sam resisted with indifference. The father saw the change in his son Sam. He told Sam he himself had a painful time after returning from Vietnam. If he wanted to talk, he could do so at any time. At this point, Sam had lost trust in everyone, including his brother Tommy and his wife Grace. Watching them have fun on the ski slopes, Sam thanked Tommy and then asked him, Did, did you fuck her? Seeing that his brother Tommy didn't deny it, Sam had another wound in his heart, but he had to act like he didn't care. It's just that his acting is so bad. In the company of his two children, Sam also became much more serious than before. The oldest daughter, Maggie, tells a joke. Sam couldn't figure out what the joke was. The younger daughter, Isha, was so scared to see her father. She was even so scared that she backed away. On the day of the oldest daughter Maggie's birthday, the family is having a party at grandpa's house. The younger brother, Tommy brought his new girlfriend with him, but she's a chatterbox. She talks all the time. She even talked about the psychological problems that come with killing marines. The whole family feels uncomfortable. Tommy even made a point of reminding her, but when a chatterbox opens a conversation, it's hard to close it. Sam never said a word. At this point the two daughters were fighting over toys, but Sam kept asking his sister to give way to his sister, who was celebrating her birthday. This makes Isha very unhappy. Maggie gets everything. <laughs> I didn't get anything that I wanted in my birthday. Why do and you were in stupid Afghanistan. At this point the atmosphere became awkward again, but Tommy's girlfriend continues to talk. Isha was sad, but even as the tears rolled down her face, no one was paying attention to her. So she picked up the balloon again to make noise. Adults chatting several times by Isha interrupted. This caused Sam to explode. Everyone was quiet. The birthday party was over. When we got home, Isha said to her mother, I don't like dad. Sister Maggie said the same thing. And at this point Sam could never face his crime, and he couldn't face the betrayal of his family. Wanted to end the pain, but did not have the courage to commit suicide. Sam finally entered a psychiatric hospital. Perhaps the only thing that can heal him is time. It was then that Grace remembered the letter Sam had left her. The letters were filled with the love of a husband, his love for his wife and children. Grace came to visit Sam in the sanitarium. She wanted him to talk about what happened in Afghanistan, to stop torturing himself. Sam was silent for a long time, before he whispered the secrets of his heart. With tears running down his cheeks, the boulder weighing down Sam's heart, and began to loosen. The end of the war is where the heart is. From the moment Sam went to war, his war has never stopped.